the reality is as long as your mindset is situated or in a good place, you don't have to be good looking like me. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I mean, I think anyone can succeed in anything. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. You know, waiting tables, um, selling, or MLM, like network marketing. I always hate giving advice because it depends. It always depends. But again, like you say, well, what if I were to start an MLM or start a business from scratch? What would I say to people? It just really depends on the situation, the environment, the marketplace. You know, timing is everything. You know, if you try to come out with a product before it's time, you just better have some tenacity. Like when I started, everyone told me for eight years nothing was going to happen. Yeah. This isn't going to work. You might as well give it up. And if I listened to everyone, I probably, I, I guarantee I wouldn't be where I'm at. So we are smoking today a Byron Reserva, top line Byron, as well as a complimentary, pairing it with a Pappy 15 year. Cheers, brother. Cheers. So you may have seen him across the internet dropping bombs on his podcast. And on top of that, met him a couple years ago uh, with uh, Grant Cardone, just had a conversation with him uh, via Anchor a couple times. But uh, I've seen him across the internet bringing value to the business community. I'm excited to join today in the Cigars with MSG episode here on the Seven Figure Squad, Mr. Brad Lee. Thank you. Man, good to be here with the Conclave of Warriors, man, sharing the stage with you, man. Honored. Honored. I'm honored for sharing the stage with you. <laughs> Very cool, man. So I I've got some notes from your talk today because I was sitting in the back and, you know, uh, it's funny. So, Matt, what should I talk about? I said, bro, the keys to success. <laughs> I started it that you way. You did. I was laughing in the back. Keys to success. But... Uh, you had a, a very natural talk. I got some notes here. You know, oftentimes people say, you know, you know, they see a guy like you, natural, successful, wealthy, rich, millionaire, decamillionaire, and they think, man, it's 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 so hard because I got to be talented like this guy. I got to be so ingenious like this guy. I mean, what's the reality? If, if somebody's watching this right now, I said, man, I want to make a lot of money. What's the reality behind that in terms of mindset? The reality is, as long as your mindset is situated or or in a good place. You don't have to be good looking like me. <laughs> you don't have to be smart. You don't have to be rich. You don't like have you. to come from a good family. No, it's like I came yeah. from a blue collar family. Um, it, it, it's all mindset, it, like perspective, really. Like, how do you see things? I always, I forgot who told me, but someone said I was mad that I had no shoes till I met a man with no feet. And I've always had that perspective. Wow. Like, did you hear what I said when I said about the million dollars? Like, how come people, if I gave someone a million dollars, they'd get fired up for a week, a month, a year, depending on their income level? If I gave someone a million dollars cash, like the smallest things don't bother people. You just got handed a million dollars, you're pumped up. But yet we wake up every morning with the news we get another day, but we don't, we don't treat it the same. But if I said to you, I'll give you a million dollars, but you can't wake up tomorrow, you'd say no. So why don't we wake up every morning with the same gratitude that we just got a million dollars? If we did, I think the rest is just a, is, I mean, the rest is wide open. If you guys didn't notice already, I'm smoking a cigar and, right? Brad here smoking a hookah. What, what's, the, what's the flavor? Peaches and cream. <laughs> Peaches and cream. He goes into his personality, man. Renegade rebel. So how'd you get involved in sales? How'd you get involved in, in, in the beginnings of entrepreneurship on your end? You know, when I was first grade, six years old, maybe going on seven, they gave me a box of candy bars and they told me to go sell them door to door. My parents didn't help me. Uh, nobody told me anything. They just said, you know, go knock on the doors, ask grandma, ask everybody to buy. So I tried it. It didn't work out too well until I discovered that you need a little, of a little bit of a pitch. So I developed a pitch. I said- In first grade. In first grade, I started knocking on doors. I said, do you have the phone number to a good roof repairman? They say, why? And I say, because when you taste one of these, you're gonna go through the roof. And they just started buying box after box. Like they weren't buying one, they were buying them all. Just because of that little pitch. So very young age, I learned, you know, humor and personality and, you know, kind of a angle worked well.
but it was on accident. I didn't really know anything. And then I got a job fighting forest fires and it was such hard labor, like back breaking, uncomfortable, hard work that I knew very quickly that I didn't like hard work. And everybody says hard work's how you get rich, right. hard work's how you succeed. But my dad worked hard his whole life, died basically broke. So did a lot of people I knew that worked hard. So I just knew that hard work wasn't the answer. So I opened up the newspaper and I saw a sales job at a car dealership. Right after I quit this hard labor job, they gave me a car to drive, I wore a suit, people were coming in, it was, it was easy. And all I had to do was basically sell. So I made more money than I've ever made in my life and I just said, man, sales is where it's at. Gotcha. Now, so I understand you have an acting background. Yeah. An acting career. So how'd you get involved as an actor? Well, I was at a store and some lady saw me and she said, you should audition for this commercial. Okay. So it was a Levi's commercial. So I auditioned for a Levi's commercial and I ended up getting it. And then that led to a Knott's Landing and Dynasty. Remember those yeah, shows? Of course, yeah. Soap operas in the afternoons. Yeah. yeah. So I got a, I got a few few extra or you know under five roles, under five meaning under five lines, right. and I just always you know wanted to be an actor. And then I got a starring role in a movie three days before production. The producer's son got out of a drug rehab, and so they basically gave him my part as oh. a reward. And I and I'm like, what's going on? And they're like, well. This guy's the one that pays for the movie, and he gets to decide who's who. Mm -hmm. So I thought, man, so all I have to do is become a millionaire, and then I'll decide who's in the movie. <laughs> so I said, hold on, I'll be right back, thinking, you know, I'll go, I'll, I'll go become a millionaire real quick yep. and come back to the industry. Wow. I just didn't know it'd take, you know, 30 years. So you didn't like politics, so that's why you depended on yourself. Yeah. I got you. So, any, any guidance, advice, because I know there's a lot of artists out there, especially today, people trying to sell their music online, people trying to act, whatever the case may be, you know, and the term struggling artist, not the fact that they're not good artists, but they're just struggling financially. What, what's, a good, what's a good job in between, if you're an artist, in between gigs? Well, I mean, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish, uh, you know, waiting tables, um, selling, or MLM, like network marketing. Um, the problem with network marketing is you could fuck around and end up making a million bucks a, a month or a year. And, and then go up, back to acting. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and then, and then change your dream. But uh, anything that you can make money yeah. with uh, without spending a lot of time. Yeah. So when you can leverage other people or leverage other resources to, to compound your money making, yeah. that's pretty good if you're going to try and be an actor because you need, you need time to go on auditions. So. Right. By the way, let's let's stay network marketing real quick. Why, why do you think network marketing gets such a bad? Um, it's it's a, it's people perceive it so wrong. But yet you just said something. People make a million dollars a month doing that type of stuff. Why do pr people perceive network marketing in such a negative light? I believe it's because the industry as a whole fails to train their people very well. Mm. So you get the masses that come into the industry. They don't. They're not trained very well. So they go out and basically spread this desperate wrong message right. where if they were just trained better it probably wouldn't be the case right but in so terms of their initial approach well yeah because like 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 when you join an MLM you're gonna get a couple of statements to ultimately start on one of them is some will some won't so what next so in other words it's a numbers game Recruit everybody you can, right. and the ones that get it, get it, and the ones that don't, don't. Right. Well, I think that's part of the stigmatism or the you know, stereotype of MLM, because so many people are coming in so ill-prepared to go out and win that they go out and blow opportunities and cause a you know, variation of, a, uh, 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 you know, it's just, they're not, they're not skilled because they weren't trained very well. So, so what area of skill would you recommend that they improve to get a better light to the industry? MLM? MLM. Well, number one, you got to understand, MLM boils down to one thing, duplication. Duplication, that's it. Yeah. So if I were going to join an MLM right now, I would have to understand one thing. Duplication is what's going to pay me. 
So if I can go grab a couple people, teach them how to do something, and then support them to grab a couple people, right? right. And then teach them to support those people, right. and it branches down and it replicates, I'll be very successful very quickly. The problem is, again, most people, they don't realize that MLM especially, it's not rocket science, it's, it's duplication. Yep. And most people, they don't get it. Their, their upline sucks, their upline was recruited and poorly trained, whatever the case may be, or they get a guy that is really, really high up and, 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 and powerful and will train, but because there's so many people coming and going, it's hard to get that direct Access. You know, gr yeah. direct access. So, like, if you recruited me into an MLM right. and you were my sponsor, right. dude, I'd win. Right. But if you recruited that person that recruited that person that recruited that person that recruited me, it's 50-50. There's, there's a dilution. Yeah, there's it's a dilution. dilution. I got gotcha. you. Um, so, when, when, when people are looking at a business, you know, you start, you start light speed, right? Um, from, a, from a financial capitalization standpoint, a lot of people start start businesses. They start in a real estate business, start a technology company, and they start, you know, service-based business. Is there a formula in your mind that you're coaching people to start a business? Is there like a formula that you said, if you're going to start a business, consider these elements or or do the math on this. You mentioned math on stage. Or or make sure you have enough potential customers or enough of the marketplaces potentially be your customer. Is there a formula that you as you're coaching new entrepreneurs to get in business for themselves, how they evaluate a business to get started? Not really. I mean, I think anyone can succeed in anything. A lot of people told me I wasn't going to make it. A lot of people, when I started my company, the internet just came out. There was no online learning. I literally was the first person to ever have a course online. And coincidentally, I helped a lot of people start a course online. So not many people know it, but I kind of started that industry. Mm -hmm. So if I could make that work, I could probably make, make anything work. So I mean, there's, all you really need is the right perspective and the belief in yourself. Because if, you if you don't think it's going to happen, mm -hmm. it's probably not going to happen. Gotcha. Very rarely do I see people succeed on accident. Right. What, 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 what values and principles do you take from your current business that you say, if you were going to start any other business, would you take into starting that business? Any common denominators? If I could start, if, if I started in a new business, the only thing I would do different is document and train people better from, from day one. Like, I've spent a long time trying to find winners when I could have just trained winners. So it's not, really, it's not really finding a super stud, because you can develop that person. Them. Yeah, you can develop them. Gotcha. Now, people always ask me now that I, I'm doing well, how do you find all these kick-ass people? Yeah. I said, I make them. You don't find them, you make them. Yeah, because your four-part process in training and salespeople is, is content, good right? Good content. Good content, repetition, practice, accountability. So let's break that down real quick. Define good content. Good content is how do you do it right in the first place. Okay. So if you do, if, if you teach me how to do it wrong effectively, I'm going to do it wrong because you're teaching me and training me effectively, but it's the wrong thing to do. So good content means the right way to do it in the first place. Okay. Second is repetition. That's why school's 12 years, not 12 days. You have to have repetition to, to allow it to sink in. Third is practice. Just because you know it doesn't mean you can do it. So a lot of times people fail to deliver the practice or give the opportunity to practice. Mm -hmm. and, and unfortunately, most people practice on real customers. <laughs> so when I developed our training technology, I knew that practice was important. So I allowed you to practice on virtual customers, virtual opportunities. So if you blow it, right. it doesn't cost you real business. So, so practice and then um, accountability. You know. If you were to teach me your business, you would tell me, get up, do this, say this, do this, say this. If you don't hold me accountable, it's much more difficult for me to actually get it done. But if you were standing by me 24-7, and when I said something, you'd correct me. And when I said something wrong, you'd correct me. And you made me do the right things over and over, right? That's accountability.
with the accountability, now I can improve. Let me unpack, let me unpack uh, repetition real quick because I want to make sure there's a difference between repetition and accountability. So repetition, is it like 101, 202, 303 type subject levels? That you, you start from the basic level and then you just, and you just build on that foundation? It, well, it depends. It depends on your, who you are. Like, I naturally had sales ability. If you, if you recruited me to an MLM right now, I'd, I'd crush it. Mm -hmm. Why? I'm, I'm already a good salesperson. I already know the art of selling and closing people. Okay. I teach, like, I have lots of businesses that use my services to train their salespeople. So I've already got that coming into the door. That's one thing you don't have to teach me. But the, the art of duplication, the product knowledge, understanding the product, understanding how it affects and helps people, I have to learn that. So repetition with that, repetition with overcoming objections, repetition with you know, just not taking no for an answer, it just strengthens and eventually produces somebody with a thick skin or the ability to, you know, keep going without, without necessarily the, the reward. A lot of people give up too easily. Yeah. Do you, do you think a lot of people in sales or sales management are afraid to teach because they're afraid to look stupid in front of their team? They're afraid to look stupid in front of their company or organization? Because what, what happens if you do a live sales call for one of your guys? And the client says no, and you screw up on overcoming the objection. <laughs> You're the sales manager. Well, number one, You're you the have team to. Leader. Yeah. Well, yeah. you got to realize number one, every deal is not closable. If I try to sell you dildos, yeah. you gonna buy? Dildos? Probably not. So it's like some deals aren't closable. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you have to find the right audience first of all. Mm, okay. But second of all, um, to answer your question, you know, it depends on. I always hate giving advice because it depends. It okay. always depends. But again, like you say, well, what if I were to start an MLM or start a business from scratch? What would I say to people? It just really depends on the situation, the environment, the, the marketplace. You know, timing is everything. You know, if you try to come out with a product before it's time, mm -hmm. you just better have some tenacity. Like when I started, Everyone told me for eight years nothing was going to happen. Yeah. This isn't going to work. You might as well give it up. And if I listened to everyone, yeah. I probably, I, I guarantee I wouldn't be where I'm at. Yeah. I believed in it so much that I just kept powering through the nonsense. Yeah. I always say to myself, the, the real reason I succeeded was because I broke everything down to 90 days. I always say, I'm going to write a book one day. How do you get anything you want in 90 days? And the days is going to be spelled D-A-Z-E because I was in a daze. I literally thought in 90 days the life was going to be different. And then after 90 days, someone would say, hey, how's it going? And I would be like, 90 more days, man, and this thing's going to cr crush. And then 90 more days, I'd be like, dude, in 90 days, world's going to be different. And so realistically, I put my head down and worked for 90 days, looked up was not where I wanted to be, put my head down for 90 days, looked up, was not where I wanted to be, looked down for 90 days, for 90 days, for 90 days. So it was 20 years worth of 90 days <laughs> that finally someone said, okay, now you're quote unquote successful. 20 years. 20 years later of 90 days at a time. If I would have thought this is gonna take me 20 years, I never would have done it. Yeah. So yeah, break yeah. things down into smaller chunks. chunks yeah. Got it. I like 90 days. Marines are made in 90 days. It's boot camp. I think the stock market is broken down. They love 90 days too as well. Quarterly reports, 90 days. I like 90 days. Um, would you, you, you mentioned a little bit of math and, and profits. So when you're starting your business, how did you manage the money that influences? This is a money, money question. How did you start managing the money? You start making profits. You started getting customers. You started, you started getting people to buy your service. Yep. Mentally speaking and financially speaking, how did you reinvest that money? How did you spend that money? How, how did it go for you? What, what, what was your process? Well, I always tell people, if you want to get rich, stay broke. What that means is when I started my company, I was broke. I started it with no money. Matter of fact, there were times I had to park my car four blocks away so the repo guy wouldn't get it because I needed a car. Um, and so ultimately, it's all about how 
like when I would park my car four blocks away, it was just common sense. Like, I don't want them to take it. If they come by my house, they'll take it. So I parked it away. Well, why did I do that? Well, because I needed a car. So common sense is obviously part of it, but ultimately, when it boils down to it, you just have to, it, it was more of a, it was more of a tenacity thing. Now, what was your question again? Yeah, getting money, when you, you get money oh, yeah, coming oh, yeah. in. How, how, do you, how do you flow that money? Yeah, yeah, because this is important. So what I did was, so I was broke, and ultimately, I finally got it to where I got about 10 grand a month. Now, 10 grand a month, when you don't have any money, is a lot of money. And so I'm thinking, man, 10 grand a month, this is awesome. Yeah. I, I could have went and got a better apartment. I could have started buying furniture. I could have started eating steak instead of Top Ramen. I could have went and got a nicer car. Yeah. But when I got to 10,000, I took five of it and I hired somebody. And I said, you and I have to get back to 10. And so now there was two of us to get back to 10. And then when I got back to 10, I'd grab five of it and I'd hire a third person. And when I got back to 10, I'd take five of it and I'd hire another person. So ultimately I just kept reinvesting the money by taking the money and staying broke and putting it back into the business yeah. to scale and grow. Right. And then, you know, it would take a month to get back to 10, then, you know, a, 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 a week to get back to 10, then a day to get back to 10. Yeah. And pretty soon, if I didn't do that, because yeah. most people, they get a scarcity mindset. They're broke for so long that when they finally start making a little money, they want to hold on yeah. to it and they want to hold it. Right. When in reality, money is a tool. If you don't use it, it's right. useless. Right. So fortunately, and again, I, no one taught me to do it. I just inherently instinctively yeah, yeah it that. was an instinct i just I, you know once i started making a little money i took it and i hired somebody and then when i made a little more i took it and i hired somebody so i just kept reinvesting and i didn't know to do that i just did that and looking back it's like that's one of the things that helped too Where's many it? too many people are broke for so long when starting a business or starting an mlm or yeah. starting you know a new in, uh, uh, venture yeah. that as soon as they get a little bit of success their mind switches and they're like, I'm tired of being broke, so I'm gonna hold on to it and I'm gonna stop doing the things that got me the success instead of doubling down. Yeah. Did, did your family or current circle of friends ever give you a hard time about being an entrepreneur, about being a business? Why don't you just get a regular job? Why don't you just get a real job? Or whatever that oh, yeah. might sound like, yeah? Oh yeah. You know, they all talk shit. They all, they all, they all, <laughs> You know, you're a fool, you know, go get a real job, you know, give it up, it's not gonna work, yeah. you know, it's not easy, who do you think you are? You know, all that nonsense. But fortunately, I didn't listen to anybody. I mean, at the end of the day, you gotta believe in yourself. Too many people don't. A lot of people, they don't realize it, but they don't like themselves, they don't feel like they're worth it, and they're not even aware of it, it's all subconscious. And the reason it's subconscious is because all their life they've been recording procrastination they've been recording lies yeah. you know things that you've done and said to people right. and yourself and ultimately your subconscious mind's recording all this so when you think hey I can go do this and you give it a little time basically your mind causes you to give up causes you to make a change but it's not a positive change and mainly it's because you're only gonna get what you think you deserve powerful stuff man how, how do you uh, okay me and you resonate in this area, family life. My wife and I were a blended family. I had three kids before we got married. She had a kid before she got married and we have one together. <laughs> you said on stage today, I have six kids, four different women, I can explain. <laughs> that, was, that was a great way to present it. Yeah, because a lot of times- Because you know the judgments were coming up already. Oh yeah. yeah. Four so, women, I mean, four, six kids from four women. What yeah. do you, what's the first thing you think? Right, player, player. Yeah, right. like, you know, what, yeah. what is this guy? Yeah. But no, it was explainable. So I always say I have six kids from four women, but I can explain. And obviously the one, you, the, the, your current wife, you're, you have two kids together. Yeah. And you, also, you're, you were also explaining the difficulties you had or the circumstances that you're in of, uh, of having the other kids. How important is it to find a woman that understands the life of an entrepreneur? Well, it's extremely important. If you, if, if all day long you're getting beat up, then you go home and get beat up, yeah. it's twice as bad. Did you sniff that out when you were dating her? Yeah. Before you got married? Yeah. 
you know, but fortunately, I, my dad told me one thing one time, because I was with this girl and she broke up with me and I thought I, my whole life was gonna be over. And he said it in a way that made sense to me and I, since that day, I always realized, oh, okay. But what he said is, hey, if you miss the 8.15, the 8.30 will be around in a minute, which meant if you're waiting on the bus and the 8.15, you miss it, chill, dude, the 8.30 is coming right, right. behind it. <laughs> so when I- That's when an I, abundance mentality, by the way. It's an abundance That's mentality. Scarcity. So, so, So I just, you know, at a young age, I knew that, hey, you know, if I lose this one, I'll get another one. So it develop, I developed a, a mindset, really, that, that, you know, fear of loss. If you have a fear of loss, you're, you're at a disadvantage. I didn't fear losing. Matter of fact, most people, they don't want to make a move because they fear what might happen if they fail. And I fear what might happen if I don't try. I fear what might happen if I don't succeed. Too many people are afraid to let go of what they have to reach for what they want. And it makes no sense if you really think about it. Like you, you're sitting there with your life, your wife, your kids, your circumstances, and let's say you're not happy. And I wanna go reach for these, but I don't, but I don't wanna risk this. Well, this is something you don't want, but you're, you're afraid to let it go to go you know, reach for something you do want. So once someone understands that, and I'm not talking about blow out your wife, but your wife needs to be on the same page. And at the end of the day, if my wife was not on the same page, I probably would have blown her out. What happens to somebody right now saying, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to be in business, but the current relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, one doesn't want to commit to the life of an entrepreneur to actually build a business. It puts you in a rock and a hard place. What then? Depends on your perspective. Again, I mean, what do you want to do? It's all, it all boils down to a decision. You know, if I decide, hey, I'm gonna go after this, and the girl I'm with doesn't want to go after that, well, make a choice. This or the girl. So if, 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 if I were educating someone watching this, and they're, they're in a relationship that they're not real sure about, but they're damn sure where they want to go, I'd set my wife down or my significant other down, and I would say, here's where I want to go. I would love for you to go there with me. Are you down? And if they're not, yeah. I'd leave them. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's what happened to me, man. People are so worried about people leaving their lives. Like, again, I love this person. Well, if you knew this person would hold you back from what you really want in life, yeah. would you really stay with that person? And if that person truly loved you and truly supported you and truly was your match, yeah. they wouldn't stop you, they would support you, they would back you, they would support everything, everything you needed to do to get there. And if they didn't understand, again, talk to them, communicate. But ultimately, if they're just like, look, I'm not down with that, next, that's what I would do. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, okay, so there's a speed round, okay? So here's a speed round of common mistakes entrepreneurs make in, and I'm gonna give a couple of categories. Common mistakes, <coughs> entrepreneurs make in X, and then boom, okay. okay? So, all right, so common mistakes entrepreneurs make in starting their business. Starting. Starting. Yeah, that's the mistake they make, they don't start. They think, they plan, they talk, they study, they ask everybody for their opinion, and they don't actually start. Wow. The number one mistake they make is not starting. Because again, thinking about it and talking about it is not doing it. Yeah. Most people talk about it, they think about it, but they don't do it. Wow. Common mistake in branding. Common mistake of branding is not knowing who you are, not being authentic, and not learning who, who you are and what you want first. Because again, a lot of people ask me, because I have a decent brand going on social media now. You know, how did you build your brand? And honestly, the most important thing I did is I decided who I was and what I believed, and I stayed true to that. I made, made sure that whatever I posted was authentic. Because most people are so worried about what other people think that they're afraid to make a move, afraid to make a statement, right?
Right. So I always tell people, look, find out who you are first, okay? Then say that with all the conviction in the world. Don't be afraid, okay? Own it. Now, the reason people don't is they're too, they're too worried about what other people think and say. So they fear judgment. Why do they fear judgment? Ultimately, because they don't love themselves, they don't value themselves, but that's another story. But ultimately, they worry about what everyone else is gonna say, so they put out a, a brand or they make statements that are kind of flimsy, not really authentic. So the biggest mistake people make when building a brand is they build it on false, uh, falsities, I don't know what the word Being is. Being inauthentic. Yeah, with right. their, yeah. They're, they're building something they don't believe. Gotcha. Common mistake in sales and marketing. Well, there's, those are two different things. Right, correct. Okay, common mistake in sales is people don't listen and they don't educate themselves on how to convince people to, in other words, they don't learn how to close people. Because selling is one thing. You can sell somebody something by being nice, answering the questions, mm -hmm. filling an order, and then I sold you. But a closer comes in when someone says no. So if, if me and you were doing business and you were looking at my products and you said no, mm -hmm. that's when a closer comes in. So the first mistake is they don't learn how to close. Okay. Now marketing, people, I think the biggest mistake people make when marketing is they don't understand the, the game of volume. It's, it's all about volume. And again, it goes back to they don't love themselves, they don't value themselves, they second guess themselves. So their marketing is restricted because they don't really believe in it. Because if you knew you had something, right. who would you tell? Had everybody. 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 Yeah. And you would risk everything to yeah. tell everybody. Yeah. The problem is people don't make the risk, they don't invest the money, and they don't like go all in. So when it comes to marketing, the biggest mistake is not going all in. Biggest mistake, biggest mistake in hiring staff and being a boss? Well, I think the biggest mistake in hiring staff is not having your core beliefs and your core values in place, not understanding what your culture is. Um, it took me a long time to believe in culture mm. and what that means. Mm core values, etc. I was I always used to think it was kind of corporate -y crap, but uh, <laughs> I've made a lot of mistakes hiring people and nine times out of ten an interview, they're always gonna tell you what you want to hear. It's like a first date. Yeah. So an interview is nothing. The question is is can they do it and are you prepared to to hold them accountable to your culture? So the biggest mistake when hiring people is not having your culture in place. Like, dude, don't hire anybody until you know what you want to duplicate. Gotcha. Common mistake in building a team. In the right people around you. A common mistake in building a team is, is, is literally believing that the team is, is more important or an individual is more important than the team. So. When I first started, I made a lot of mistakes building a team, and I always worried about one individual rather than the team itself. So I always used to say, like, you know, I care too much. I care too much. You know, oh, I don't want to let you go, man. You got kids. You know, you're a good dude. But, man, I just, I feel, I care too much. When in reality, I didn't care enough. I didn't care enough about the team members. I didn't care enough about everybody that you're hurting. See what I'm saying? I didn't care enough when I thought I cared too much. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Because again, a long time ago, well, not a long time ago, but about 10 years ago, I had about 40, 50 employees, and I didn't want to fire anybody. I didn't want to let anybody go. I thought, man, I got them. It's, it, you know, turnover is expensive. If they just do this, if they just thought this, yeah. when in reality, l holding on to one person cost me ah. other people, three other people, four other people. So again, the best way to lose an A player is to worry about a C player. Last two ones. Common mistake in making your first six figures. Not getting started, you know, not believing in yourself, not believing that it's possible. I always say, dude, it doesn't matter who says you can't do something as long as you're not one of them. 
What about making seven figures? Dude, six figures, seven figures, eight figures. I'm going on nine figures. Same amount of effort to make six as it is. Same seven. common denominator, same value, same, same thing. Get going. Think bigger. Scale. Too many people want to restrict. Like, I'm broke. I'm making six figures. Let me hold on to it. No, no, no. Double down. Do more of what's working. Uh, you want to go to seven figures? Same, same way you get to eight figures. So the, the common mistake is to restrict rather than expand. What do you, what do you think, last question, what, what do you think people are afraid of in scaling? Ultimately, I think, I think, again, I mean, deep down, it's, they don't think they deserve it. Your mind has a way of making decisions to keep you where you think you belong. So if I think I'm a billionaire and I think I deserve a billion dollars, I'll be a billionaire. When it comes to scaling, people have limited beliefs deep down and just because they did well, now they think I, I better restrict, you know? And then ultimately, I don't believe I'm worth nine figures, which is why I don't go to nine figures. Because if you look at somebody that, you know, starts out and all of a sudden they're making six, then they're making seven, then they're making eight, and everyone's like, oh my God, how are you being so successful? And they don't know, it's because they're, they're continuing to do what's working, mm -hmm. right? And right. doubling down. Mm -hmm. Most people don't do that when they hit seven and eight figures. You hit seven figures, ooh, I better be careful. Right, right. Now I better change what I'm doing. Change what you're doing, double down on what you're doing, it's triple working. down. Yeah. Dude, double up on what's working. Most people don't do that. A lot of the guys that watch my channel are veterans and former athletes. And you mentioned something on stage today about hard work. You mentioned earlier today in the interview. Uh, hard work. A lot of these guys work hard, and a lot of these guys working hard in the military, law enforcement, first responders working hard, protecting our, our communities. Athletes, they were working hard for their sport, and they're no longer playing that sport, but they're not getting paid. Uh, last bit of advice, and encouraging those that work hard at those things into the next transition to life and considering entrepreneurship. Well, I mean, hard work's good and it always is an advantage but it's not the answer um, a lot of people always ask me that I work hard now listen I work a lot I don't work hard tomorrow morning I'm not gonna be in the sand <laughs> um, what is hard if you looked at my life you would be like dude you don't work hard because I don't however some people would say I do because I put time in so hard work is not the answer. It's, it's, it's part of a solution. So the harder you work, the better. But then again, perspective is more important because what is hard? You know, if you come home with blisters on your hands and you work three hours a day, that's hard work. It's not gonna get you anywhere. But if you work smart and work 18 hours a day, you're gonna dwarf the person that worked hard. hard. Right, so again, manual labor, is not necessarily as valuable as people think. If you look at the brokest of the broke, they're all hard workers. Yeah. Look at the military. Yeah. Dude, all hardest right. working Sisters. individuals on earth, military. None of them are rich, not ethically. Like again, if I were in the military and I kicked in fucking Osama bin Laden's castle and saw 15 pounds of gold, I'd be figuring out how to get that home. <laughs> So like hard work like that pays off, but may not be ethical. Hard workers are usually the broke. If you look around, the hardest workers, Latinos, uh, minimum wage, hard fucking working people. They're not making shit, why? Because the smart people are getting them to work, which means one thing. I don't wanna call them broke people, but let's call it scarcity mindset, trades their time for money, and the very wealthy trade their money for time. So a lot of people think we're limited, right? We only have 24 hours in a day. I personally don't believe that. I can hire 100 people eight hours a day. I have 800 hours today. What a great perspective. Yeah, and most people think, you know, well, we're, well, we only have so much time. No, 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 time is unlimited. 
you have to collapse time, you have to duplicate time, but when you think to yourself, I only have X, you're limited. So personally, I don't think that way, and I think ultimately if people just realized that, that you know, anything is possible once you make the decision to do so, instead of asking, you know, like for example, some people say, I wanna be a millionaire, but they don't ever ask how. Once you plug into the universe, you plug into this universal knowledge of how do I get rich, that's when you're gonna start meeting people, you're gonna start seeing opportunities that you don't normally see because your reticular activating system is putting it in front of you, and if you're not aware to pay attention, you'll miss them. So like when I wanna do the next level, I always say, how am I gonna do this? And then I watch and I listen and then I start meeting people. And I'm aware, like when I'm meeting you, it's like, is this, who is this person? I'm looking for the opportunity. I'm positively, ooh, is this person the one I'm supposed to meet? Is that person the one I'm supposed to meet? I'm looking for opportunity. I believe the opportunity's coming. Most people don't do that. They're like, how am I gonna be a millionaire? How am I gonna be a billionaire? Most people, billionaire? Mm -hmm. They don't even think that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's just do a million. How am I gonna be a millionaire? I'm never gonna be a millionaire. Correct. Because whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right, you've heard that. It's 100% fact. So if I, if I were watching this right now and I wasn't everything I wanted to be, I didn't have the house I wanted, I didn't have the car I wanted, I didn't have the wife I wanted or the, or the husband, or you know, I didn't have what I wanted, I'd be listening to one thing. Number one, you better believe it's possible. Because if you don't, you have to go work on your mindset. Once you have the mindset, now you can make the money. Once you have the money, now you can worry about your health. And once you have the health, now you can worry about the honey. I always say mindset, money, health, and honey. Because dude, have you ever had like millions of dollars in a kick-ass body? Relationships, which is the honey? Dude, they're all over. Now you have to figure out which one to, you know. <laughs> So too many people worry about the relationships before they worry about the other thing. First thing you worry about is the mindset. Do you believe? Do you f feel you're worth it? Once you do that, once you master the mindset, now money's easy. Like money's easy. You can put me, right now you can take every, everything away I have, put me in a town. I don't care how big or small the town is, mm -hmm. and I will make money. Why? Because I know I can. I just, I just believe that. So money's not a problem for me. Mindset is what does that. Mindset, money, health, honey.